guys it's another day and another harvest and I have a couple of a melon down here and a bell pepper oh no it got eaten Ugh, I gotta give this to the chickens but the rest of these are cucumber melons I'm almost ready to pull the plant out it's doing pretty good still so I haven't but the problem is it's blocking the sunlight to my chili peppers so I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to wash these and give it to my family. And I've been harvesting my zinnias, so many of them, so that they can make more blooms. Because every time you cut them, then down in the stalk, another bud will form. And it will have more flowers for you. So why not take advantage of it when it's also a late season flowering crop, flowering plant. So while I was here plucking the cucumber melons, I not only know of this giant heavy watermelon, but today when I was cleaning up, I found this one. <laughs> and it's not nearly as big, but it might do, it might do before the next rain. So I finally pulled that watermelon out of that pot that it was sitting in that I had put some um, Adirondack purple potatoes in and I thought it was completely dead so that's why to my surprise I didn't even grow the watermelon in there it just grew the vine kind of spread over here and grew in here and I left it but then now there's flower um, leaves from the Adirondack. I, I doubt there's many potatoes down there, but if there is, I would be very happy if there is. Um, I didn't do any, hardly any watering when I thought it was dead down there. Okay friends, so yesterday I harvested over 500 cucumber melons. Today I've decided this is all coming down. I know it's nice and lush and green, but I need to expose the sunlight to my chili peppers. And they need it, they need the warmth. They need to make nice chilies for me, which I absolutely love to use. So as I was trying to rip out my cucumber melons, I found this. And if ever you find something like that, it kind of looks a little scary. And I've seen it before and I feel so bad because I tossed it into my greens bin. What it is, is the like egg shell of praying mantises. So in there are hundreds of praying mantises mantids so what I'm going to do is take which I already tore off this piece this branch here and what I'm going to do is stick it in another area on another tree so when it hatches it will live so I'm going to stick it in my apple tree let it stay dry and I hope it won't fall off. And when um, it's, I'm not sure if they have a, any that lay in the fall, I'm that hatch in the fall, but I know for sure I've seen them hatch around April, May, or March, something like that, in the spring. So all of this, if I don't spy any more praying mantis or any other habitats, I'm going to stick it into my compost bin and compost it down. Hi friends, so this is what happens when squirrels climb your tall um, sunflower plants and just make it fall over. So I had it attacking um, my other sunflowers over here and I scared it away but it managed to do this to my sunflower over here. So it's laying on the ground, losing its petals. 
not getting water because it's bent over 90 degrees there. So, and then the other sunflowers are suffering a little bit, but the honeybees are just having a field day. All day and all, this is now evening, it's four something p.m. and they're just buzzing around still. I love it. I'm offering them nectar and stuff for pollination. I cut some of the sunflowers off of that stalk to and place them in water to preserve them a little longer. And I'm hoping that the honeybees and other pollinators come over here and kind of do some pollination here and here with my zinnias. Some of these got dried out when the water ran out. Anyway, I just hope that it gets further pollination so that I can, once it dries up, I can save the seeds. So now that the fence is cleared of the vining um, cucamelons, then you can see my chili peppers. There are many, many plants there. I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven chili plants right here in this area here, along with this one right here. The basil plant I need to put some some stuff underneath it, some mulch to keep it alive. Over here, all my new seedlings are doing really, really well. I'm really happy. I do have to split them up, separate them out. I may do that this weekend. A few leeks or green onions have come up, but my problem is they're really puny and that's not very good right there. So I have some lemon queens growing amongst some um, other variety of more orange sunflowers. But you see how it's tilted over like this? It's because the squirrels keep climbing up here. It's really, really annoying. So with my cosmos and my zinnias, I've been going around deadheading. So like this, I would take these off, take these off let the other ones bloom and pollinators will come and just you know circle around all these and it'll keep pushing out new blooms as long as you keep deadheading it'll keep making more new flowers in good shape that's why it looks so good right now So I harvested some my loofah. I saw that they were brown now, complete, like mostly brown. And then I shook them. So you can hear the seeds rattling in there and that's when you know it's ready. And so what I'm gonna do is soak. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna soak it. Let me see if I could just take off the, the skin. One second. So I'm going to try to squeeze it with my hand. Let me see if I can do it. So it's kind of like an eggshell, nice and dry. Oh, I like this. It's so easy. I hope.
Okay, let me do this um, off camera, but it just comes right off. I just can't do it with one hand. Excuse all the construction. I've got several houses in my neighborhood that are under construction and renovation. Anyway, so I peeled this off relatively easily like a eggshell. And then what was shaking around were all the seeds. So you just go like this. And there are so many seeds. I'm so happy because I tried growing this a couple times and I had grown them in pots and they don't do well in pots. Vining things just don't do well in pots. Um, you have to put them in the ground, I feel like, unless other people have more success than I do. So what you do is you just shake it all out. Because I bought the, these seeds in 2018, and this is 2023, and I managed to grow three, but two of them died. So there was only one plant. I still have more seeds in my package, but not many. Maybe like two seeds left. So now that I have these mature seeds and so many from just one lufa, I am so ecstatic. I am so happy about that. And I'm going to grow this more and more for years to come. So if you look in this canal, I think there are no more seeds. And that's the benefit of waiting until it's fully dry. I love that. So what I'm going to do is harvest the seeds and put them in an envelope. And then uh, the I'm going to cut this into like sections or something like that. I, I want it to have enough bulk. So maybe even just like that or or something like that. Either like that or like that. And um, I'm, I plan on using them for dishes. Love it so much. And it's a natural thing that you grew and then now you can use it in multiple ways. It's also edible. However, I really wanted the loofah. So let me do that same thing to this, this one. Crack it open. This one's bigger. I'm going to go off camera to peel it. Sorry about the noise. Let me go off camera to peel it. So here was the second lupa and it was a little darker at the bottom and this one took quite a bit more effort to pull off because the skin was held tightly to the lupa. So, um, but anyway, it, that could make it that might have been a good candidate for soaking for like five minutes. So here I'm going to just shake out all the seeds. So I would have had five or six of the loofahs. However, something climbed up my trellis and ate some of them because like I said, they're edible and they're soft when you harvest them young. They're like a squash, sort of, and it was really annoying because they ate most of them and I was only able to catch it and save these two, but the good thing is that um, I have so many seeds, so I might grow like several um, next year, and that way I can have, because I want more loofahs. So I can't just grow one lufa if things are going to be eating my crop. So some people bleach this, but I rather like the natural color of it and I don't like to use chemicals if I can help it. I mean that's the point of growing your own useful sponge um, is to be eco-friendly I think so it kind of defeats the purpose but I mean if you to eat your own if you want to do that so um, I have four sections and once the water goes in it's gonna squish down so I think I'm just gonna keep it like this and so this I'm gonna kind of like um, squeeze the seeds and take off that little that layer that surrounds the seed and then um, winnow it so that I have nice clean seeds. I don't think it's necessary to do that, but I just kind of don't want that extra stuff floating around in my seeds. And um, then I'm going to stick it in an envelope because it's already dry for the most part. And 
and um, so let me just do that right now and yes I'm so excited to have Lupa to, to use and then to get so many seeds from, from even if I got one I would have been happy but I'm so glad I had two I would have been really really happy if I had all five or six or however many that grew I'm pretty sure it was like five maybe six anyhow um, yeah the one of them it had already hardened and the critter ate half of it and left it there so it, because it was getting too too rough so here are my lupa seeds in the envelope and I'm gonna put it store away for next year and I'm gonna grow a bunch and see how viable those seeds are so here I have the lupa and I you're not going to be able to squeeze it without wrecking it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it. Soak it for five minutes. And then after that I'm going to see how squeezable it is. And how easy it can be used. Oh yeah, it's already starting to give a little bit. So all this stuff here on the sides are the things that were surrounding the seeds, the chaff or whatever you call it. And so I'm just, um, it's okay because the static made it cling to this plastic container. So I just have to wash it. But I'm just, oh, it's already giving, it's, it's already getting um, easy to squeeze. So I'm going to give it a couple more minutes, go inside um, and um, have a little late lunch and come back out and check on it. Here's my lufa carcass that's half eaten. And here's the other lufa gourd that's half eaten. I could have had two more lufas. I'm quite upset about that part. But it's okay. It's offset by the fact that I got a lot more seeds now. So anyone who has a garden would know that there's a million things that you can do every day. You can write a long list and just be doing a fraction of what's on that list. If you've been following me, you have noticed that I've been harvesting my rosemary, my bay leaves, my lavender, all kinds of things. And I triple wash them and I have different uses for them. So culinary uses for rosemary. And I was going to see if I could do tea, but I'm not sure yet. Um, but as far as lavender goes, so um, here's my lavender. I harvested it right here. And as you can see, it's kind of wet or maybe you can't tell. But this is the first washing of it because it's close to the ground. It collects dust easily. And also my husband's been working on the, the yard and it's been kicking up a lot of dirt and it collects it into these bushy, low growing type of plants. So this is the first washing. Look at how dirty the water is. So I'm going to wash it three times um, and, and then show you how the water progresses. So here is the second pass. The water is still slightly murky and those are all the dead lavender leaves. Um, I'm going to pour that out. And by the way, that's the best part of having a sink that's outdoors is I can reuse this water to water my plants, They're, thereby reducing my water um, fees or whatever you call it and water usage. And I have decided this year that I'm not going to be consuming the lavender um, unless I take like bits of it to make tea. Um, I do have a project in store for the, the lavender. Um, so I just cut the stems, wash them three times, and then I, if I, if I have to, then I'd wash them a fourth time, of course, or a fifth time. Um, so what I do is um, I strip all the leaves off the stems and then I dry them and then I can use them for my project which I will show you in a coming video, upcoming video. So um, stand by. 
So here is a third pass. Yet again, there are a lot of dead leaves. However, if you're just using it for a decorative or craft purposes, um, it wouldn't matter if it was that clean. But because um, I'm just a stickler for cleanliness, in case I do change my mind and use it to consume as a tea or something, um, or bake something and put some lavender leaves on top, I would like it to be clean. Um, and the scent is just magnificent. And um, if you've ever been to uh, Boba Time, I love their drink. It's called Blue Sky Lavender, and it has lavender flavor and scent. It's wonderful. Well, friends, this is the fourth pass, and I'm good with it. Um, it's primarily just debris from the dead leaves. I'm pretty sure a little dirt won't hurt, and I'm going to... Um, bring my lavender inside, let it dry a little bit so that I can easily just run my finger down the, um, my fingers down the stem and get the leaves, um, off of the plant and harvest all those leaves to dry. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it, um, you found it helpful. Please like, subscribe, and share. It's very much appreciated. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm trying hard every day to do something productive in the garden and to show it to you and share it with you all. Oh, thank you. Bye. So today is Wednesday and we're due for some rain around 1, or 1 to 4, um, maybe even before that. However, first it said it was going to be a heavy rain and now it's saying it's going to be like a light rain and um, then it said it was just going to be today and then later on it was going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and now it's just saying today, light rain tomorrow and then some rain on Saturday so who knows what the weather's going to be like but I've done what I could to prepare. I closed up the chicken coop um, so they can stay dry in their coop. And I put up things. I covered my strawberry plants and my um, my seedlings so they don't get drowned. And then my strawberry towers, my green stock towers, I uncovered the top. Um, I usually place a, a plate over the top of it so that the water doesn't evaporate too quickly because that tower has so many holes it's going to dry out quickly. So when I usually water it through the top, I will put a, a plate over it and uh, let me show you. So Greenstock has a cap for their new models. Um, and it has a little sprayer to that runs from your hose and it um, waters your green stock. You, you get the waterer and then you get a plate that covers this whole entire area here so water doesn't evaporate and so this doesn't get filled with dirt and stuff and clog up the hole. So I saw something like that and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have a watering system to put here. I mean, I could put a hose and just like let it sit in here. But I did put a plate, which is, let me show you. It's basically a Costco, um, one of the pie cover, the bottom of the pies. And then you have the tin with the pie in it, and then you have the cover. So I just take this, and I put it like, like so, on top. And it just keeps my, um, my reservoir here clean, and free of dirt, free of bugs and also decreases the chance of evaporation gives it one more layer of coolness that's why my green stock is so lush right now it's doing great since the rain is looming um, you know I, I showed you my other watermelon that was striped I forgot the, the variety it was um, I harvested that to have um, with my family because we had dinner night together and so now I have this second watermelon which let's see it it got attacked a little bit by something but I think it'll be safe it healed over so and 
this part is already dry. I just was trying to wait. And since it's going to rain, then timber. I let it loose. Now, let me show you something. Over here, there's another one, but it's only about a little bigger than the palm. Like, the length of my hands it is. Not, not bigger, but it's about the length of my hand. And I don't know whether to harvest it or not. It's still green, so I think I'll leave it. Um, the temperatures are going to be in the 70s and then on Saturday in the 60s at the high. So um, if not, I'll, I'll pluck it out if it doesn't get warm after the rains. And I also have another one that's small, so let me, let me show you. Here's that striped variety, and this one's a little bit bigger than that green one, but same thing. Um, I mean, that tendril right there is brown, but I'll just give it a chance, this last watering from the rains, and then I'll I'll bring it inside afterwards. Okay, so I found the labels because I'm cleaning up the yard. And the striped watermelon is called the Crimson Sweet Watermelon, which it was quite sweet. The inside was pale pinkish, like a pinkish pale red. And it was striped. And this one here, the dark green watermelon, is a Dixie Queen watermelon. So that's pretty cool now that I know what varieties they are. So as I'm walking through the garden and cleaning up and observing, I noticed that I have a lot of wild bergamot seedlings down here because earlier in the season um, it made those purple flowers and then they dried out and looked like this. And then I just plucked the, um, I deadheaded them and threw the deadheads down here. And I think that's what brought on these new babies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pot them up and give them to various people because um, uh, my sister has bees and they love to go on the wild bergamot, the bees, they love it. So I'm gonna get some of that for her and some friends. Hi friends, so this small concrete bed that I have, it had lots of weeds. Um, two years ago I had a Tulsi growing over here, a couple Tulsis, and um, some brassicas, and what happened was my mint overtook this, as well as some crabgrass. So I kind of left it alone for a year and um, then I had the idea to take my compost uh, bin and dump everything in here and then I took a bunch of cardboard and I just threw it over top. I watered it then I threw it over top to smother the weeds and stuff and for the most part I think I have. Um, it's been covered for about three months now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some fresh soil from my Costco organic um, soil bag, organic choice, and then I'm going to throw in my seedlings. Let me show you how the seedlings are doing. Before you do that, let me show you all the earthworms that were on under the cardboard, you know, working through all that compost and dirt and stuff. They're so active. <laughs> So here are my seedlings. They're growing fantastic. Tall enough now, I think, to separate. And I'll put them in that garden bed. Here's another bag of that organic choice. That other bag was just, you know, a fifth or a sixth of the soil and it didn't do very much. Sorry, it's in the shade there, so it's hard to tell. So I'm gonna add more of this into there and then plant, transplant my seedlings into that garden bed. Hi friends, so I did transplant these things. So I have King, King Richard leeks with some Mizuna in between. Mizuna in the next column or row and some Snowball Y cauliflower and so in the next column it's bok choy, kai lan, 
then slow bolt um, Napa cabbage. Slow bolt Napa cabbage one kilo. So I hope that I didn't grow them too close. I tried to get as much as I can in them because I um, per pot I potted a lot of um, seedlings. Still have a lot of seedlings left over and I'm going to give some of those to my siblings and then I'm going to plant some of them elsewhere.